Craft Warehouse followers. Today we are going to be doing wire art. Um, so same concept as string art, but with wire and the results are amazing. You can't get the same vibrant colors that you do with wire and it's just, it's really eye striking. Um, also you can get some really cool layering if you do want to layer with um, the wire. So I am using a 26 gauge um, artistic wire. So I have a purple and orchid. I have seafoam or peacock blue, sorry. I have a seafoam green and then I'm using an ice blue. So just kind of a scale of blues up into a purple. And then I did draw out a design for today. Um, so I have a feather. So I went and drew how I liked it. And then I put my dots on the outside at least of where I roughly want to put my nail. Um, there are tons of different patterns out there that you can find and print out that will already have um, your pattern and your dots. So it just really comes down to a preference of yours. I'm going to go ahead and rotate my board. Um, this board's a little bit bigger for the screen, and I do plan to put my design a little lower. So I am going to go ahead and just push that up. And I think I want this about here. I'm going to probably put a vinyl at the top. Um, I could always do a picture, and I might extend this bottom just a tad longer. But those are just little details. And then I do have myself these little um, like wire nails or picture nails. So they're going to be nice and clean, nice flat head on them. And then what I do is I either start at the top or the bottom, but I usually start at the top. I'm just going to want to put that right in where I think my dot should be. and nail it all in. And I'm just gonna continue on down. You wanna make sure you get your nails as straight as you can. Kind of put them all in there about the same height. Now, if I wanted to come in like the center here, when I do my nails and have that a tad higher, I could because I'm gonna want that to sit on top of my feather. Um, but it really just comes down to preference. Also, if you are afraid of hitting your finger or aren't able to hold your nail real quick, I have an amazing trick for you. If you are a beater and have any crimping pliers, you can just hold your nail right in there. Put it on your spot and... Ta-da! It's so easy, and it's much easier than, um, like, trying to squeeze your fingers in there. I have really big fingers, so sometimes it's a little difficult for me to get into these tighter spots, but I have no issue when I'm using my um, crimping tool. Now, another thing I do like to point out, sometimes you need to think about your pattern. Um, if you have some dots that are going to be difficult to get to, um, if you went and did all one side, you might need to go in and fill it in. Like, this could end up being difficult if I wasn't able to rotate my um, pattern. So I'd probably go ahead and do it before I got too far down. But if you're able to rotate your board and get in there with confidence, then go ahead and do it. It really comes down to your pattern. Like I've done a rainbow before and the way that those nails were, I had to be very strategic and be paying attention that I didn't um, cut myself off and being able to put a nail in or at least not make it quite as difficult. Also, Whatever wood surface you're using um, could also determine how easy your nails go in, how well they hold. Um, if you have more of a palette board, you probably will need to take a drill. You might not be able to just hammer like I am into this softer wood. Um, 
It really just comes down to what you're using and preferences. Because palette boards tend to have some more knots in them than the one I'm using today. So when there's more knots, sometimes a little more difficult to hammer it on in. But with some of the tricks of using um, like the crimp crimp tool to hold your, um, I'm off a little bit on my dots here. Um, using a crimp tool to hold your nails, um, that will help you at least a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this side I'm already working on. I'll go down the middle so that I have no obstructions with the nails over here, and then we'll finish off with this far side. And I'll be right back with you. Okay, so we have this fully hammered. Um, there's a few spots. I'm just gonna kind of hammer in and make as even as I can with everything. It's okay if it's not, um, but I do have my middle just slightly up above everything else. And I did extend, like I said, all the way down um, to the bottom of the board here. And now from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it up. Get any of that extra paper out. If you can't reach into there, just go ahead and use some pliers. Pull all that paper up. Now, if you are drawing your own like me, I want to point out um, I did go ahead and I thought about my pattern beforehand. That is why there's so many nails on here because I want to make sure as much as as much of the wood is covered um, as can be with wire. Since in this pattern, I'm just going to be pulling from here and going to the center. Um, my nails needed to be tighter. Now, if I was doing more of a pattern that I was crisscrossing in between, I might not need as many nails um, as this particular design, but let's get started. So I'm really excited about this one, you guys. I'm gonna set my wire up. Um, don't know if I wanna go from the bottom up or top down. I think I wanna go from the top down. 
And I like the way that the colors are lined up like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that ice blue. And I'm gonna rotate this just because it's a little bit easier for me to see this top side. I'm gonna put my wire order over here. And I'm gonna start with that ice blue. So I'm gonna work with it straight off the spool. And I'm just gonna wrap it around this top one a few times. And make sure it's just nicely secure. Um, you can come in with some pliers and go ahead and snip off if you have that in, but I did go ahead and wrap it all the way around. So now I go to that top nail and I don't wanna be pulling too tight because this is gonna end up having um, a lot of wire on this top one. And if I pull too tight, it's gonna start to pull the nail out of its place. And I do not want that. So I'm just gonna go back and forth a few times here from the top of my feather to the top of the center. And now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna loop down and then I'm gonna to come to that second nail on both sides. So I'm gonna go down. I'm coming on the nail closest to me, second side, and then go down to that, um, that first nail and then come up to that second. So up to my second one and back down to the center. Up to my second one and back down to my center. So now I'm going to come up to that third one. On each side, so third peg of the third nail of the um, design. And we're just going to do that alternation again. Just a little back and forth. And I can do this as much as I want, um, but you just want to get it to a point that you really like it um, and that you're not putting too much strain on your nails. I'm going to do this last one here. So right after I finish that third one, I'm going to go right down to my second center. I'm going to fully wrap around it. So I've already gone... I want to make sure it's nice and snug. I'm going to push it down just a tad so it gives me room to build off of it. And then I'm going to come up to my fourth peg or my fourth nail on each side. And I'm just going to do the same thing. And I'm going to do this maybe with two pegs here, and then we'll skedaddle on down to the next. Now, I have to think of also where I might want my transitions to be. Um, another thing is, I don't know if you can see, but I'm starting to develop some really clear lines. Um, so if I'm not loving that, because at the top it doesn't really matter, but here it's really going to, you're going to see it. If you want to fill that a tad, you can kind of overlap on that nail upward. So just one nail up. So what I really wanna do now is get that, get go down one more on my outer. So there'll be five nails down um, and keep it on the center. And then from there, I'm gonna basically go one nail per center, except for when we change colors, we'll alternate by going over two and kind of blend the colors a little bit. And again, I go about five times on the one nail. Um, and then I wanna make sure I'm also getting the one above it, just to kind of fill in some of the empty space. Okay. Let's do one more. Oh, 
Okay, so from this peg, I'm gonna just alternate right down to my next one in the center. So I'm gonna go back and forth, center to my right, to my left. Now the way I'm doing this design, I'm hoping that it's gonna give me more of a feathery look. Um, and you're gonna be able to see like how it kind of comes up to each nail. That is just what I was kind of going for. But it just really comes down to preference. And again, going up to that next um, nail when doing this design is going to be important in filling in space. Um, if I did not want that, then I do not need to do that. But um, it's going to kind of help that color fill in that wood behind. Okay. Now I'm gonna come from that, I think I'm on number six, and just drop it down one more in the center, and then come up to the, my next, um, next one in line on each side. And I do that about probably five times, and then I'm gonna go ahead and alternate up a little bit to fill in that space. And these are just kind of rough estimates. Sometimes I do do um, a little bit more on a certain particular nail because I think it needs a little bit more color. Maybe I gave it a little bit more spacing because I didn't um, actually measure in between each nail. And maybe you want a little bit more color. So. Again, I'm just alternating up to that next nail to fill in some of the space. Sometimes too, so I, all, I went all the way up, I came down. I'm actually gonna come on the other side of this nail and then wrap around and then um, it kind of fills in a little bit of the space between the nails too. So just kind of Putting your wire on a little bit different on each or on the nails is also going to alternate things a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to wrap that last one and then go down one more. In the center, come up. And again, it's so much easier to work with this off the spool. So I do suggest um, working with it as long as you can on the spool before you, um, and not taking it off. Cause it does get a little bit tangled, not as bad as string, but it can get really messy. Oh my gosh, this is already so vibrant. I love it. Best thing too is this is so easy to dust off. Okay, so now I'm gonna start doing, going up to that next level. Just kind of, so I can fill in some of the wood gaps. So right there, I was having some issues with things popping off. So what I'll do is just fully do a wrap around the nail to make sure that's nice and secure. And then I don't have to really worry about it once I do that. Okay. A few more wraps here. Now I'm gonna drop down once more. Going to that next 
nail on the outside. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this around a few times. Get that nice and secure. I think on this next one, I'm just gonna do a slight bit of color um, and then I'm gonna come in with our next layer. So I'm gonna drop down to that center one, coming in just a little lower on this particular um, transition color. So. Just gonna keep it nice and low. And then to kind of go back and forth a little bit here, I'm gonna transition that next color. So I'm just going to wrap it around here a few times on this outer nail because I'm, I don't want to snip it yet because I might have to kind of layer a little bit more, but we're going to come in with that next color and I'm going to go ahead on the nail below it. I'm gonna go ahead and tie it on. I'm gonna snip off the extra wire. I wanna make sure my flush cutters, the flush side is facing. And we are just gonna go to the nail below in the center as well. I'm gonna go back and forth on this just a few. Get the color nice and solid down here. Okay, let's go back and forth a little bit more. Okay, so I'm liking the fill on this. Now I'm going to do just like we were doing um, to fill in this gap in between nails. I'm just going to rotate up a few times. And we're just going right back to that same nail in the center. Because we want this to blend very nicely. We want a clean transition. We don't want to see um, exactly where I started the next color. Okay. I think that one's good, you guys. I'm going to do a couple more on the top side for these, oops, for these lower outside ones. And 
And then we're going to go ahead and transition to that next center. Oops. And then I'm going to go up. And on this nail, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to snag also the one right below on each side on the outer. Now on this one, I'm going to go ahead and double the nail. So I'm going to get both of them kind of wrapped in. And we don't want to forget to also transition up um, to blend in eventually to that gap we're going to end up having. Now, when I stay on one side and do only one side, it is going to push down the wires below it. So it can end up making it look like thicker on the whatever side you are doing last. So let's say I just wrapped these guys and then I did this side. Um, this side is going to be higher. It's going to look, um, these guys are going to be much, they're going to be pushed down, looking a little bit more dense. Um, I really suggest to get an even look. If you want to do only one side and then come and do the other, that you're going to alternate all through it right before you finish. Um, that way it gets an even look and you're still going to have that color showing through at the bottom. So we're going to hit all three. I'm going to alternate, go up to the third on each side. And then we're now going to start and go to the second peg of this color. Sorry, I keep getting this stuck. Oops. I'm going to try to spin this on here. And then we'll do that final peg. Okay, so now we're going to go down to the next <clears throat> center. I'm going to wrap it a few times on one side and go to the next side. And just alternate. And we're just going to go ahead and continue this. I'll do the transitions um, of the next few colors, but it really just comes down to preference. I could even keep this just like these colors. It'd be beautiful too. Just make sure when you're doing um, your own at home that you are doing that wire going up to that next one on the outside um, for just kind of, again, filling in the gaps and, um, giving it a finished look.
Okay, you guys. We are fully down our feather. Oops, this guy is not in a home. Just gonna pop them right over. Now I could go ahead and fill anywhere that I find an issue right now, but I think it all looks good. These are all tied off. Remember we tied them off in our transition, um, but we kept them there just in case we may need them. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip. Cut this off here. And again, I'm using flush cutters, flush side to the wire. I'm gonna make sure this one's wrapped around a few times. Okay, so as you can see, most of my spools, I've used almost all of it. I do have quite a bit of purple left. Um, so I could either come in with a purple because I want to fill this spine in. I'll also help fill some of the gaps. Um, or I do also have another blue. So I could come in with like this turquoise color. But this one has, it's not quite as shiny. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that purple and make a really predominant spine here. So what we're going to do is... I'm gonna come to that top screw in the center, or nail, at the very top. I'm gonna just wrap around my wire. I'm gonna wrap, I'm gonna wrap my wire around a few times, snip off the extra, and then here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back and forth all the way down the center. Now, if I'm having anywhere where it's having a hard time sticking up or popping up, I can just go ahead and wrap it around the nail head and then continue on down. Probably would not hurt to do it every now and then anyhow. Um, it's just going to make it a little bit more sturdy. So right down. And I am going to go ahead... I'll come right back up and I'm hoping that I'll end up being on the opposite side because I want to feel the wire coming in this way. So we're going to wrap it around that last nail head and just oops, come right back up. So I should be on the opposite side of the nail head, kind of filling in a little bit more. And I'm going to probably do this a few times. Making sure as I go along, I'm staying on that opposite side. And it's also when I do this going to help fill the gaps in. Come on. So just back and forth all the way up. And I'm going to come back down. Now, if I think that my center looks good after going um, up and down a few times, and I don't like the stem at the end that's not, hasn't been wrapped with any wire down here um, for feathers, then what I can do is I don't have to go all the way up. I can just stay down and just wrap this part. We're gonna go do this a few times, so. Just bear with me. Okay. And again, we want to make sure that we are going to end up going opposite way of the wire that we just did. Just make our way right back up to the top. And when I'm going along, 
If I have anywhere that I have a hard time, I just kind of push the wire down. Okay. And we're going to come right back down. And I actually think for me, I like the way this looks. Um, I don't need it to be any thicker in the center. But again, that's just a preference. I'm not a huge fan of the silver nail head, but I'm going to show you a little trick help us get rid of that. But we are going to go ahead and I want to fill this in a few times. So we're gonna go once more for the stem down here. Just wrap it all on up. So let's, one thing I am gonna do too is just kinda tie it back into these nails, these side nails. And then I want to finish on this last nail um, at the bottom of this. So I'm just going to twist it, if I can get it around, twist it around the nail a few times. And then we'll flush cut it off. Now there's a few things I can also do from here. Either I can leave it where it's coming out like this. I could also come and do the same thing on the outer side and like frame my um, feather in a little bit more. I could also come in with the same colors and help frame in the feather a little bit. I could just wrap it at the top and weave it in and out of the nails like I did the purple. But I really like the way it looks and I really don't want to mess with it too much. So... Let me show you the trick for the center here. So I'm gonna come in with some alcohol ink and a Q-tip. So let's open this purple up. I'm just gonna get a little bit on the Q-tip and then I'm just gonna go right down on those center nails and dab my Q-tip on them. So that's just gonna make it so that they're not Quite so silver and standing out also blends in with that center spine just a tad more making it a little bit more prominent I'm gonna go all the way down now another thing I can do instead of doing the wire like I was saying to frame my feather is I can come in with alcohol inks on these nails and it's gonna, again, even just that will give it a little bit more of a finished look. Let's see if I have all the right blues. Even just having it, any of these, any blue will help. I'm gonna go ahead and see how this color looks. That one's pretty good on that blue. Go all the way up on that. And again, it's just getting it so that those nails aren't that vibrant silver. And it's gonna blend in with our um, wire just a tad more. Even if you're doing string art, I think doing this would be really nice because it would just kind of give those nails a more finished look. 
Now, let's try this guy here. Can't even see that color on there. I'm gonna have to continue up with that blue. The only other blue I have is pretty vibrant. So let's see how this looks on here. It actually looks pretty good. I'm probably gonna go all the way to the top with this one. Since I personally do not have a bunch of different alcohol inks, but there are alcohol inks that we could probably find in the store that would match this really well and cover our metal. So this is what I'm using right now is from Pinata, and this one is a Baja Blue. So just color, color, color all the way to the top. And we're gonna do the other side as well. So coloring these silver all a blue or a blue green. Just kind of giving it a tad more finished look, but we can have our feathery parts look a little bit more organic. Now on all this, all the colors, I only use a spool. So if I was really wanting to fill this out more, I can, but I'm gonna have to use more wire and buy more wire. Um, just is gonna come down to your own personal preference. Now I did use the Monsoon on the darker blue, the Baja on the rest, and then I used a Passion Purple for the center and the bottom half. Just in case you are doing similar colors and having a hard time finding alcohol ink, um, most of those colors you can get out of um, one of our exciter packs. So yay, my feather is all done. Now what I wanna do is I wanna add a vinyl. I have a couple vinyls. I have a Forever and Always or Adventure Weights. I'm kind of feeling the Forever and Always. I just think I could add a simple picture. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get that open. So if you haven't used a vinyl, you should be able to just pull um, your top layer and your um, all your letters and stuff should stick to this transfer sheet. Now, if anything's having a hard time, I do suggest just coming in with a popsicle stick or a credit card or something and going across the top, just with a blunt, something with a blunt edge, and then you can go ahead and pull your vinyl back, again, all sticking to your top transfer sheet. This bottom sheet you're not gonna need, so you can just go ahead and toss it. And then I am gonna go ahead and put this at this top corner. And I always like to point out, it's gonna depend on your palette board. It's gonna depend if there's a finish on the um, wood piece you choose but some vinyls are gonna have to take a little extra patience to stick to their surface. Um, if you really have a surface that you're loving and maybe it has like a weird kind of finish on it, um, sometimes the best way to do is seal it um, with like a clear spray or a Mod Podge um, and then it'll stick really nicely. Otherwise, you're gonna just have to really be patient and kind of work with it. So I'm making sure all my letters are sticking, kind of going back and forth with this transfer sheet. Cause I don't wanna pull anything away. This little booger is not sticking. So you just wanna push it down. You can kind of go slow and pull back, or I could fully push it back down and use my popsicle stick to work with it. But Ooh, and there I go, you guys. How fun is that piece? And again, I could have created anything. I could have had this more filled in. It really just comes down to preference. Um, but I love the way this looks. It's just really fun. And again, I just think the wire is so vibrant. It doesn't even, it doesn't give you justice on the camera. Let me bring it up. Just look at that. It is so stunning at uh, the shine of the wire. Um, you just, and again, so much less tangling than string, which I love, especially if you work straight off that spool, that's gonna be your key. 
but really fun. You can create anything and it's a really great eye-catching decor piece. All right, you guys, thank you so much for following along and happy crafting.